Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I am speaking with a friend and client, Catherine Avery. Catherine is one of those people who you, if, if you knew her story and you knew her personally, you'd be like, yeah, she's, she's give, give her a pass. She's got tons of reasons why she shouldn't get anything done. But this woman gets so much shit done in a week and there's always a lot going on in her life and she's overcome so much in her life and she's such an inspiration. And that's why I asked to interview her. She's a huge success story as a client, but just as a woman in general and a business owner, she's really inspirational and motivating to listen to. So I wanted to invite her on here today. So Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Jen. Excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> Catherine, will you tell everybody what you do now and where you came from and kind of tell us a little bit about your journey because it's kind of an interesting journey. Where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to start at day one. <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, mom and dad. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's my humor. So my story is I run a company called productivitybydesign.com. And I have a podcast called The Uncluttered Office. And what I do is I consult with small business owners. And that really can consist of people who are running their own shop. Or it can consist of uh, departments in a company that's maybe 100 employees. And I help them figure out how to set up their space for highest productivity and for the wellness and well-being of their employees. So it can be everything from choosing a better ergonomic chair to uh, teaching them how to get organized. So actually sitting down and showing them a finding system that I learned through productive environment. So I'm a certified productive environment specialist, I've taken mm -hmm. training to do this. And I have an interior designer uh, certific certification. And uh, if you go way, way back in my history, mm -hmm. I have an MBA and worked in corporate America. So I've kind of been around the proverbial business block. <laughs> right. So you really understand from the inside the struggles of an executive and a team when they are disorganized and what the, what the costs are of being disorganized. Can you talk a little bit about why it's so important, like why your work is so important in the world? Because it's more than just a clean desk, right? Well, it's way more than a clean desk. Mm -hmm. It has a lot to do with your energy. Mm -hmm. So when you declutter, you're making space for good things to come in, whether that's just simply having the ability to be organized and lay your hands on that paper. Interestingly enough, a lot of folks don't realize the impression they're leaving. So one of the great tricks I learned when I was in the world of uh, interior design and real estate was to walk out of your place and walk back in as though you were a visitor. Mm. and not yourself. So you have to kind of take yourself out of yourself and then yeah. go in and just look at it and say, huh, wow, when a business colleague walks in here, when the client walks in here, what are they seeing? Are they seeing stacks of paper all around on chairs in my office, et cetera? And what impression and image is that leaving for people? And what it's leaving is, and it doesn't matter, you could be the most uh, successful business person ever. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. amazingly successful people, but they lose clients because clients go in and they see this wow. mess and they say, is this person really competent? And you know, we all judge it's terrible, but it's true. We look at mm -hmm. someone within just seconds, we judge what kind of person they are. So first of all, I'm going to say this, yeah, that's kind of natural, but I'm also a judgment free zone. So when I'm working with clients, I'm starting wherever they are. Mm -hmm. and, and that's huge because there's emotion tied to clutter. There's, uh, it may be that you struggle with paperwork because uh, with filing paperwork and putting it away because you might naturally be a piler, not a filer. Mm. So pilers are people who have to see everything out or they think it doesn't exist and they think they'll forget about it. So two things. The first thing a piler can do is have, say, vertical file folders. So I, I was a piler. Mm -hmm. I, still, I still am a piler. <laughs> Let's be honest. And what I did was I did these magazine holders and say my bookkeeper comes, I have a magazine vertical file folder thing that says finance. And when she comes, I just hand it to her and it's all pre-prepared and ready to go. And quite frankly, in between times when she comes every six weeks, I'm just shoving stuff in there. It's not <laughs> I don't pretty. have to organize it. I don't have to deal with it. She comes, she deals with it and it's great. So that's a great natural way for a piler to start getting organized. So I just did it with a travel agent. 
She has tons of travel brochures. They were piled everywhere. And unlike your gorgeous bookcase behind you, which is all very <laughs> beautifully staged. Yes, I know you had a little help with that. I did. Um, <laughs> she had stuff everywhere and this very cluttered bookcase. And I kept saying to her, every time I look at that, I want to break out in eyes. And if I'm thinking that, then there's going to be people who are saying, you know, she's disorganized. Mm -hmm. Now she's got all these great, believe it or not, bright pink magazine holders and all the brochures are stacked to them. And it looks, it's a beautiful bookcase now. It's still very full. Look, I'm not telling people throw it out. I'm just, although that's nice if you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, if you really have to keep these documents and for her travel business, she does. Sure. Then keep them corralled in some way that looks attractive. That's super helpful. Beyond helping people like with the perception of what other people think of them, um, why is organization and decluttering so important for ourselves? So is there something, is there a benefit beyond making space and allowing things in and then beyond like having people not judge us or think we're disorganized? Like how does it make us better? I think it makes us feel better. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like the folks who tell me, oh, I get up and I, and no, no judgment again, but they get up and they go to work in their yoga pants or their pajamas. Mm -hmm. I can't function. How you see me right now is pretty much how I dress every day for work. Uh, I might have one jeans. I don't today, but I might. <laughs> and because most of my work is done like this, yeah, where it's just sort of, you know, waist up, neck up, up or whatever, you know, <laughs> so, you know, you have to look nice from here up. Yeah. So your office is similar. When you walk in your office, you want to feel super professional and mm -hmm. you're going to feel more professional when you've got what I call white space. Well, a mm -hmm. lot of people call white space. It's that creative open space. Believe it or not, clutter, we say, is a sign of a creative mind. Yes and no. One of the things I suggest to people is, yes, you're going to have a mess going during the day because you're working and you're busy and you're doing things. Once you have a system, and that's what I learn and teach from a certified uh, productive environment uh, group, is that you can have an easy system where you put things away and you choose what that is. So it might be that you take five minutes at the end of each day to tie to your desk. I do. Uh, you might have, you know, your to be filed section and you do that every Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And you can take this to any scale. So I had a client in um, Danbury and they had a system where different people were, it was counting company, were working on the same client files. And they were all put out in various office spaces, which meant, let's say, Jen, that you need Mrs. Jones's file and I've got it. You now have to walk in on me and ask for Mrs. Jones's file. We've now interrupted at least 10 minutes of your work time and 10 minutes of mine. Mm -hmm. Now imagine that happens five or six times a day with multiple employees and you can see how quickly this adds up. And then you put dollar amounts on it. Like right. say your typical employees paid, I don't even make it up $50 an hour. You can quickly see how the numbers add up. Point is we moved them to centralized filing. Mm. And one of the things they had was interns. And I said, I bet you pay your interns a lot less money than you pay your accountants. <laughs> okay. So what if your intern was doing the Friday afternoon filing, not all your employees, you've just got an hour back times 12 employees. Yeah. So you are helping people... <laughs> save money, make money, save time, create time, and actually create energy and save energy. Like, so you're really hitting time, energy, and money. If somebody hires you and you can help them see things in a new way, they get a huge return on their investment. Sure, and they also look at space. So if you, if you reduce the clutter, you don't need as much office square right. footage, right? 100% so right. So you may not have to go to a bigger office space or you may be able to streamline things in a different way. Uh, one of the other things we did for that client was um, their, uh, one of their top accountants was working in the conference room because there wasn't an office for her. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you ever use your conference room? And they said, no. This completely unused, vital space to the company where they were really pro team building and doing things together. So I said, how about we move your two interns out of that office they're sharing, move your accountant in there, and the two interns can now kind of hot desk mm -hmm. in the conference room. 
Well, if you interrupt the interns, it's not a disaster or maybe they go to yeah. another desk or whatever. Next thing you know, I'm seeing them having all these team building events in their conference room. That's so that's, amazing. That's space, time, energy, money. That's everything. Yeah, collaboration, everything. communication, so many things. I don't think I've ever thought about it on this, this deeply of a level. This is really, really interesting. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your business. And I know that you have a passion for, well, you know, you've, you have your history in business. And then you parlayed that into your interest and specialty in design. And now you've kind of pivoted again, speaking specifically about organizing but not organizing like in general really like working with this very specific niche which i always talk to people about like niching is so important knowing where you're heading is so important and this month i'm talking about vision i mean it's 2020 let's talk about vision let's talk about clarity and you've already given us a lot of great tools in terms of how decluttering and organizing can help us be more creative and make our vision a reality um, but I'm curious, what's your vision for your business in 2020? It's really to get out there more speaking mm -hmm. and reaching a wider audience. It's great to work with people one-on-one, -on -one, but I know there's this incredible message I have to share. I mean, we haven't even started to touch a bit on the fact that I'm a cancer survivor. Right. And that was in September, 2015. And, and what I discovered during that journey, and this does relate, hang mm -hmm, tight, mm -hmm. background, uh, is <clears throat> that I have a touch of executive functioning disorder, mm -hmm. which for people who don't, aren't in this world, that's very similar to ADD. Mm -hmm. and, and I won't go into the long details of how I found out, but it really coupled with chemo brain, it mm -hmm. meant that in the following spring of 2016, I was absolutely at a loss. Papers right. were piling up. Everything was crazy. It was virtually shutting down my business because I couldn't function between the two. And what happened was is I felt so much empathy for people who are struggling with this. They may already have something. And then you throw in a full-blown crisis of some kind. Right. And I hate to tell you, but in life, none of us is going to get through it crisis-free. Right. Something's going to come up. And it may not be cancer. Mm -hmm. It may be um, your child has some special learning needs. It may be that your parent is suddenly ill. I mean, you know, just this weekend we're dealing with that. Uh, not my parent, but nonetheless, a family member is, is, is ill and we're kind of juggling that. And that's, that, but, but you want that time. And the way to have that time is to have the systems. So it's really my goal to get out there and say to people, you can do this. And it doesn't matter if you're like me, who learned to surf at 53, who yeah. would have seen that coming? Yeah. Uh, you can make it happen and you don't have to struggle. Mm -hmm. It can be done with more ease. You just need certain systems in your life. We actually call systems saving you space, time, energy, and money. So, mm. so you've hit the big four. We've hit the big four. So those are the things that really make a difference in your life and allow you the space to be able to move forward you know, especially if you're a small business owner with continuing your business and not having to shut it down. I, I saw that and I just said, I don't want anyone ever to have to have that experience that I had. Did you, when you were struggling before you had your epiphany of like, oh, this is executive functioning disorder and it's chemo brain. And did you have any struggles with uh, like judging yourself about quote unquote, being disorganized. I feel like people who are disorganized, like kind of feel shame about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I really did during that time period because I was so frustrated. I said, I, I just can't believe I'm not able to continue to be a competent businesswoman. Yeah. And, and I had to give myself a lot of grace and, and really kind of get permission. I don't know mm -hmm. if you were there when, um, Patty Lennon had an event and she said, uh, she got me up on the stage and pretty much said to me, you need to take a month off. Mm. <laughs> Stop beating yourself up. And that was probably almost a year after I had chemo. Mm -hmm. you, because it was you, all like a, it was all like mountain climbing. It was just this giant struggle. Or maybe it was like mountain climbing while pushing a boulder up the hill. Geez, yeah. And, and it, you are a very determined woman. And that's what, <laughs> yeah. so that's what I alluded to in the beginning of the interview. Like I know a lot about, well, I know probably <laughs> a little bit about Catherine's background, but um, you know, you really 
everything has been a struggle. And in the last, uh, but you keep, you keep moving forward. You keep, you know, there's always a lot going on and you keep moving forward. And I keep, I, I watch you um, get momentum because you move forward sooner and quicker and faster and easier now than I think you did probably a year ago. Uh, certainly, you know, longer ago, it was probably a slower climb. Um, and in the last few months, I've really watched you have more fun with your business. And this makes me so, this absolutely delights me. And so I wish, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what you did to make business a little less arduous for yourself. I think a couple things. The first one was that I accepted that I don't have energy at night. Uh -huh. I just, I do have sort of a hangover from way back when, and I absolutely positively have to honor my body. And if that means at 1 PM, I've got to take a nap. I, I to be honest, I do, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of nights, my husband comes home, it's five o'clock and I'm resting for 20 minutes mm -hmm. because I know I've got to get dinner on the table and, and be there for my family. And I've put in a full day at work. And by the way, my work day starts at about 6 AM. Mm -hmm. So it really, I'm up early. I'm an early bird. I love to work early in the morning. By the way, honoring your body's rhythms, if you can. I know some people are in a nine to five and they right. can't. Right. But if there's any way you can honor your peak times of the day, I do my best writing and my best intensive work at six in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I've learned to really schedule my day to honor those lower energy times. So yes. like you and I book this now because this is still in the high energy window for me. Right. If you're having this call at 2 p.m. <laughs> That's right. Or this be... podcast at 2 p.m. Yeah. I'm collapsing on the desk. Yes. So at 2 p.m. I'm either out and about meeting people, having coffee, and, and enjoying time with people one-on-one, -on -one, or I'm doing sort of the busy work. You know, we all have, who called it this recently? Administrivia. Was that Oh, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stealing that. It's so, yours. <laughs> totally stealing a minute yeah. yeah. So I'll do a lot of that in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And and I just honor where I'm at. And plus I have a child who's a teen. Sometimes she needs to be picked up from school. Sometimes we need to run an errand or see a doctor or something in the evening, you know, late afternoon, evening. So I just have learned that it's really great for me to be up first thing do a bunch of work, then I work out, shower, and continue back to work. So uh, what's the point of all that? It's really about your well-being. And I think as I've honored my well-being, and I've honored that I can only do so much in a week. I mean, Jen, you always tell us, pick three to-dos. Yes. I don't know if you saw what I wrote this morning. Uh, there's always a lot there. Three to-dos this week. <laughs> and I'm like, I feel frazzled and I need to step back, which mm -hmm. I did this morning. I actually stepped back into the meditation. Mm. And said, all right. I clearly need to clear the decks. Is that the word I'm mm -hmm. looking for? Mm -hmm. And so I'd already put in like three hours of work. And I said, let me just step back, take a deep breath, do a meditation, do my workout, although shortened, mm -hmm. and then come back to this. And then I can be back to doing after being. Yes. I mean, part yes. of what I've learned this year is how to just be. Mm -hmm. And we've done some things. We've gone on vacation. Um, it was, we're away for two weeks. Like, I guess it's partly that I feel the systems are in place now. I yes. really got it figured out. When so you put the systems in place, yes, I'm sorry, I, I totally interrupted, but, but when you put the systems in place, it's that upfront energy and that upfront time, but it serves you so much on the back end. I think people have trouble understanding that. They're like, no, 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 it's going to take so long to train this person to do this thing. I'm like, yeah, but how, much, how many hours are you going to get back on the other side? Absolutely. And I mean, you and I have done a lot of that together. Mm -hmm. So getting the writing, getting the whole social yes. media set up, yep. having the free opt-in done. So many things that I kept feeling were holding me back in my business are accomplished now. Yes. After what? I don't know how long I've been in idea space. Oh, a, a year. Yep. A year. It'll Which be a year a in January. It is. Um, you also are having, I'm watching you on social media and I'm, I'm, I see your emails come in and I, you're having more fun with your voice. And I, this is one of my favorite things because you are speaking authentically to who you are and you're speaking to the people you want to attract to you. That was a big shift for me. And, and you remember how much I fought you on this. Yep. <laughs> 
You know, I really came from corporate America and I also have an English lit background. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little, uh, can a little grammatically uptight and learning how to just write the way I speak. You know, I think what it was a big shift for me too, in a, so there are two pieces to this. Okay. Piece one is, was the writing and us working together on my writing style. Piece two is that I do the podcast. Yes. And I think I found my voice in doing a podcast. And then once I realized with your help that I could take that podcast voice and translate it to writing, mm -hmm. it became a whole lot easier. Yeah. So when did we start that? Probably, I think, July. Yeah, it was the summer, yeah. I started mm -hmm. switching over. And, and it was, what did I say the first week? It took me an hour to write yeah. five social media posts. Yes, you were very frustrated. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, like, like pushing that boulder back up the hill. Right. And, but now it's like, takes no time and I love it and I have fun with it. And I can yes. plan like a whole month out of content looking forward. So like this month is yep. what I'm calling um, uncluttered holidays, more presents, fewer presents. Mm -hmm. And the whole month is around that theme. How do yeah. we be during the holidays, not just to do? And then what, where my brain goes is you've now got that content done. Next fall, fall 2020, you can start to push that out as an asset in your business. You can speak about it. You can set up speaking gigs in September and October for November and December using this content. It's done. Yeah. And what's funny about that is it's a really, this was like a light bulb moment, probably around Halloween. Mm. And on Halloween, there was this big, I have to tell you the story. This is big sort of drama llama moment or drama mama moment <laughs> on one of the mom's groups I belong on. Uh -huh. And everybody was freaking out about the weather. We had a, we had oh, a yeah. huge wind and rainstorm and, and three days ahead of time, everybody's freaking out about it. And, and I kind of come from the perspective, like it's just a holiday. <laughs> and then when you've had cancer, you're kind of, your perspective is just a little different. <laughs> right. like, We'll figure it out. I, you know, my daughter wanted to go trick or treating. She's a teenager. I was shocked. She still wanted to go. I was totally in. I was like, great. And and we'd actually gone to get ski boots on Halloween, which is sort of weird. But it's anyway, we get back and it's like six forty, and we my husband gets this notification that says the town has decided that at eight p.m there's going to be a curfew and they're not going to let kids trick or treat after 8 PM. And the reason was the worst of the storm by now they actually have data mm. is going to come in at 9 PM. So what was happening with these moms was they were all like, we should move Halloween. And I'm like, you're the parent. <laughs> just, just tell your kid. I'm really sorry. Halloween's not happening this year. If you're that worried, that's your job as the parent, right? Right. Right. So in our case we did, we went out, there were tons of kids there were kids everywhere this neighborhood was packed with kids it was a complete blast we trick-or-treated till 8 p.m on the bottom <laughs> ended at our friend's house so we could you know milk it a little longer uh -huh. <laughs> and you know went back to our house which is just down the street like three or four houses down and we had this amazing holiday so when i thought about it i thought hey you know you get to the thanksgiving christmas hanukkah kwanzaa season and people are a disaster. They're stressed out. They don't know what to do next. And I just thought this makes so much sense to just teach people how you can get intentional about how you spend your holidays Yes. and, and still get your work done. Like mm -hmm. I'm still being really super productive. Yeah. Even and it's Christmas time. <laughs> and, and it's Christmas, Christmas time. time. <laughs> you no, can do both. And, and so there's some shifts you make. And one of the biggest ones I found, and this really came directly out of cancer, was what's most important to you? Yeah. And then we're talking about this for, this is for January. So think yeah. about this for your new year. It's, it's perfect for this, this month though. Star, right? Yeah. So looking forward, what's most important to you in the new year? I'll now transition this. And how are you going to set those intentions in motion? So like last January, my intention was we're going to take a massive family vacation. I want my daughter to see Europe and some other places in the world before she's off to college. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're three and a half years out. So TikTok. Yeah, right. So we did. We, we made this intention and we figured it out and we made it happen. That was a lot of, you know, goal setting around January. When you're making your goals for the year, don't just be, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I know. 
fun. Something right? that really matters, right? That's right. A fun goal. Something yeah. that lights you up and fills your soul. Like that's really where I'm at. And I think that's why I'm having fun in my business now mm -hmm. because that's my mission. I want people to realize like they get the systems, they have them in place and they can have a life. Yeah. Well, I want to wrap up by saying one thing. Last January, when you started coaching with me, you had a goal to get a lot of shit done. And that, that was, in, that included like your freebies and just getting a lot of systems in place and you did it. And now a year later, now a year would have passed whether you did that stuff or not. A year later, that stuff is done and it's now freed you up to not only have fun, but you're looking at growing your speaking, growing that speaking aspect of your business. And I have no doubt that by this time next year, you will have done all of that and will have a totally new vision for 2021. So I, I love I love your story because you set the intention, you're clear in where you want to go, and then you just set about getting it done. You have lots of people to support you, like you're part of different groups, you have a coach, you know, you you get it done. And I think that you're the perfect person to represent January 2020, clarity and vision, because you have a vision and you work it every day. And you work it sometimes at six in the morning, right? And sometimes at one o'clock in the afternoon. But um, I think that it's really inspirational to have you come on here and show people that, first of all, thank you for all the tools that you shared with us in the beginning of the podcast, because it's super helpful. But that makes the space so that we can then have more fun with our business and, and be intentional about it. So thank you so much. Thank you. I wanted you to tell people where they can find both your podcast and where if they want to work with you or have you come in as a speaker. Okay. On my website is productivitybydesign.com. There is a section about speaking and really just go there. And I think it's under about, but I can't remember because we just <laughs> changed the website. Of course. They'll find it. They'll find Maybe it. I just added a speaking or media button. I'm pretty okay. sure we just did that. And then uh, the podcast is also on my website, but I don't, I don't know if we've made the podcast button yet. We were talking about it. That is called the Uncluttered Office, and it's found on everything. Stitcher, Great. iTunes, Libsyn. What are some of the other ones? Uh, is it on Spotify? But I don't know if it's on Spotify. I don't remember. But it's definitely on four of them. I can't remember exactly, but okay. you can find it on iTunes and Stitcher, no doubt. Great. Well, thank you for your time today. This was really inspirational, but also educational. So, I, you know, I love that. So thank you, Catherine. I appreciate you. Thank you. Talk to you soon.